This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Mesa Ridge fifth wheel model 374 BS or BHS. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm just going to go over some of the uh, some of the features and appliances and components and show you how they work. It's mainly for those who aren't familiar with the model or are not familiar with RVs. Period. So, okay. So first of all, this has an automatic leveling system called ground control. So it has a, it's a six-point system. So you have two rear, and then if you move up, you've got two in the center, one on each side, and then two up front, which is traditional landing gear. Okay. Now, the thing to remember about this, it has another attachment called a strong arm. Let's get down here. Um, when you raise it, re raise these and lower these, this should always be loose, right? But when you get it down in the position you want, you'll tighten it up. That way, it just it just takes some of the movement out of the trailer. But you always want it loose when you're moving it up and down. Okay. So if you if you're camping and you're uh, you've got them extended and you're leveled, you're getting ready to leave before you return to hitch height. You always want to loosen all these. Check all the jacks. There's a two maybe actually there's two on each of the front so that's uh, four six of them I guess total so okay also while I'm down here this is the a quick connect for a grill um, that's the valve it's off you basically you plug a quick connect fitting in here turn it on and you have LP let me put that back where it belongs okay you'll hang your grill right on here. Now, the grill is probably up front. Let's go look. Yeah. So, this is the hose you use. He's got a quick connect on this side. And then this would plug into the connect, quick connect under the trailer. This is the rack it sits on. Of course, this is your, uh, your grill. So, uh, let's move back to where we were. It's a big trailer. I gotta pick up the pace. I only have, uh, 28 minutes something like that so I gotta so this is a griddle obviously always be careful this comes up and it's real heavy um, you have to turn the gas on and off here but so you figure you got the grill plus a, a or the griddle I'm sorry plus a grill so you've got a lot of uh, cooking space this is just utility stuff here you've got a uh, uh, refrigerator works on 110 AC um, as soon as you plug the trailer in this will turn on so it's hot wired in that sense so as soon as you plug in it turns on all right of course you got you got a sink out here all right so let's move on you have uh, two awnings with uh, with the LED strips right they're all power awnings so you just push the button never leave them out unattended of course um, this type of slide room, just so you know, is called an accu slide. All right. Now the, the stairs fold into the trailer and fold uh, um, back out to adjust the length of the legs. You can pull a pin here. There's one on each leg, and you can slide them up and down and adjust it accordingly. I'm trying to do better with my my camera work here. I know what people are always complaining about it. I have a limited limited equipment and uh, apparently limited skills too. So. I'll pay, try to pay better attention to what I'm, where I'm pointing the darn thing. This is your a quick connect sprayer here, right? <clears throat> this is a three-quarter inch uh, crank, and this has this tool here has to do with the awnings. If they happen to fail or get damaged, you can bring them in manually. I can't explain to you how to do that. You're going to have to watch the manufacturer's video. Or read the literature in your packet inside but uh you can get them in if you have to okay of course that's your dump hose there and a, and electrical reducer all right you see how i said stated that there's two on the front on each uh um of the landing gear on the front so okay now you have six um 20 pound tanks so you see uh, one on the other side two on this side the, the regulator changes over automatically, so you just basically turn them all on. 
Um, they put, the, my, my understanding is they use 20, instead of using 230s, they use 320s. You still end up with 60 pounds, but these you can trade in anywhere. The, the 30s are harder to, to, to trade and swap out, so, okay. All right, so you have, these are, lids are still off. You got two batteries, 27 series deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together as 12 volts, so you're just doubling the storage capacity. Um, you're still staying at 12 volts, okay? So, now, the landing gear, there's two ways to operate it. Uh, this is the, the basic way in the sense that it, this will allow you to auto level it. It'll allow you to go to hitch height, which is what you want when you're tracking. Hitch height is the last position your trailer was in before you auto leveled. So the idea is when you're unhooking from the trailer, you push, you pull your tow vehicle out and you hit auto level, right? Then. When you're ready to leave in a week or so, or two, or whatever whatever period of time you're staying, you can push hith, hitch height, and it'll return it exactly to that position. So theoretically, you should be able to slide right underneath it and hitch, hitch up and go. Now, if you do retract all, it will actually nosedive. It won't damage anything unless you've got something under the front. But um, if you hit retract all, it will, it will it will retract everything, even the front landing gear. So generally, you're not going to do that. Okay. Now, to turn this one on, you just push both. Uh, up and down arrows at the same time see so it goes green now there's also a, a digital or let's say a, a touch pad inside uh, I'll show you that we get it within there it just it does the same thing as this except it has more features okay this is your your battery kill switch right here off on so you can shut your batteries off if you need to this device up here it's hard to get a picture of it but it's a power inverter right so this inverts power it goes from uh, it takes 12 volt DC from the batteries and, and, and er, inverts it to 110 AC and then that's hooked directly to your refrigerator. So when you're going down the road, let's say, um, your, 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 your inverting power in your refrigerator is running, uh, is pulling um, power from the batteries and your batteries are being charged by your vehicle's um, alternator. So uh, you can keep, keep food in there and it'll stay cold. When you get to the campsite and you plug in your power converter will be running the refrigerator or charging the batteries and that are supplying power to the inverter which is supplying power to the refrigerator I'll show you the, the uh, power converter when we get inside two things inversion which is going from DC to AC and conversion which is going from AC to DC okay all right so this is your water you hook up here so basically you just have these different drawings here of uh, the different positions. Right now you can see we're set up for pump or city water. That means we can pump from the fresh water tank or use city water because it's in this position. Right, you can see the pictures here. If you want to fill the tank, you change it to this position, winterize in this position, and bypass the water heater in this position. So you can do everything from right there and you hook your hose up to this port right here. Now, um, there, are, there are more, there are two black tanks in this trailer. So you have two black tank flushes. Basically, after you flush your black tank, uh, let's say it's the front back black tank, you leave the valve open, like right here, pull out all the way open, you hook a hose here at the dump station, hook the dump station hose right there, turn it on, it'll spray out the inside of the black tank. Same thing for this one, this is for the rear, but you gotta open the rear valve first. It says right here on the sticker, I'm sure that, always uh, make sure the valves are open before you turn the water on. So that's your black tank flush. This is your water heater. It's, um, let's see, it's, the switches are inside the trailer. Let me just set this aside here. The switches are inside the trailer. I just want to show you that there's an extra switch out here. This switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here. So keep in mind, you, you can't use the electric until you turn the switch to the on position. There's also switches inside. That's sort of a, a um, redundant switch. So to speak. Um, this is where you drain it takes an inch and a sixteenth socket plus an extension plus a ratchet you can you can drain it that way okay I'll show you the switches when I get in there there's another or the, this is the valve this 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 dump connection is for these two valves up here right um, also this one it appears to be the fresh water connection I would think I didn't actually prep this trailer but um relatively yeah it says right here so that's for the fresh water 
Um, then you have another one here, right? And then you have three valves here. Black valve, which is for the rear toilet. Um, a gray, which is for the, uh, the toilet uh, um, vanity in the bathroom. And then you've got another one, which is probably for the outside uh, sink. I'm sure that's what it is, okay? Remember, before you flush the black tanks, always open the valve. Okay, you got a, a 50 amp cord because this is a 50 amp system with two air conditioners. <clears throat> so um, right now you can see we've got it reduced down to a 30. You get that reducer plus even another one that reduces down even more. Um, just remember you can't run the air conditioners when you reduce it down to 15 or 20 amps, okay? All right. So this means it's, this housing means it's pre-wired for a backup camera, right? Also, you have a ladder, which is a great thing because the manufacturer states you should, you should uh, inspect the roof every 90 days. So make sure you or somebody else goes out there every 90 days and checks all the sealant for cracking or separation for water leaks. Um, uh, check the uh, vent covers and the uh, roofing material, make sure they weren't damaged by low branches, things like that. Um, odds are when you go up there, you're not going to have to do anything, but that's why you inspect it, just to make sure, okay? If you see something, take care of it immediately. So here we are inside. So now this trailer actually has two control panels. <clears throat> it has an analog panel, like you're used to seeing. You got the floor, four slide rooms here, two awnings and awning lights here, right? Um, you can you can turn on your water pump right here. Remember, I told you you could pump water out of the fresh water tank by by setting that configuration on the in the water dock. Um, turn on electric here. Remember, I told you there's a second switch and gas right there. Never turn this on without water in the tank. Never. If you do, it'll burn out the heating element in less than a minute and uh, it's not a real big deal, but it's it's a repair, so it's not a warranty issue either, obviously. So, Okay, um, lights. This, these are your levels. Right now that beep we're getting is the is the low level alert. Usually you can shut it off, but that one just sets the sound off probably. Yes, good. So, you check your battery right here, you check your fresh water here, black water, gray, gray 2. If you, you know, when you, when you push black, black tank here, that's in black tank 1, you can switch positions and push it and you get black tank 2. So you got to select the tank right here. Okay. Alright. So you also have this um, touch panel here. Now some of the, the controls, the lights, for example, devices um, are duplicated. Here you see the slides right here. So you can operate the slides from here just like you can from this panel right behind that door that we were just looking at. So there's your four slides, pretty self-evident. Also I told you when you, when you use the uh, um, self-leveling system, let me push it again, you can do it from inside or outside. This one has more features inside. Blue temperamental here. Let me hit it right. There we go. Okay. So you have auto level and auto, auto hitch height like you do up up in the one in the compartment, right? Um, but you could also select, you know, auto auto retract, manual mode, and manual mode. You can choose the jacks from this wheel here, this pie wheel here, and then make them go up and down by pushing the plus or the negative. Um, before you can do that, you have to push enter, of course, to, to select it. But you have more features on this one here, okay? Um, this one is easier to abort, too. If, you're, if you need to abort for some reason, something was underneath it and you don't want to squish it or something, come in here and, and it'll, it's much easier to do, okay? All right, so we're in the bedroom. I don't normally start here, but I will. So this is the zone two. Um, a thermostat right here. You can see you hit it once to light it up then you just go through the auto uh, air conditioner on cool furnace. Always try to run it on auto right the fan I'm talking about air conditioner auto that's always the way to go. Um, if there's a lag time it takes five or six seconds to uh, for the appliance to kick on or kick off for that matter so keep that in mind of course. Um, the bathroom there's also going to be another thermostat in the back for zone one. So, um, so the bathroom, 
Sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. This is a GFCI here. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, so there's probably one in the back of the trailer too. We'll, we'll look for it and point it out when we get there. Um, even the plugs on the outside are wired through this one of these GFCIs, so keep that in mind. Now the main thing about the toilet is you can't use it dry. By dry, you see there's a flush pedal there. By dry, we're talking about the black tank, which is directly below, right? So what you do, so when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water, of course. Then you'll come in here and you'll put one dose of chemical in the bowl. Then you'll step on the flush pedal, water will come swirling out, and you'll wash the chemical and put about a gallon, or some people use more, but at least a gallon of water in the black tank. You do that for both black tanks, for this toilet and the one in the back. Um, and then you're all set. You can never use it without water and chemical or the smell will be overwhelming and it also can get clogged up. So each, if you were to, get, let's say you had to dump your tank, but you're going to, your black tank for this toilet, but you're going to stay at the campground for another week. After you dump it, you'll repeat the procedure. You put a, a, a dose of chemical and gallon or more water, okay? All right, also the ceiling, you should always run this vent with the shower too to pull the humidity out. All right. So let me, again, let me pick up the pace here, I'm lagging. Okay, I showed you the, the power inverter in the front compartment. The inverter takes 12 volt DC, turns it into 110, 120 AC, right? This is the power converter, which you're probably used to seeing. This does just the opposite. It takes AC power and turns it to DC. So you have regular 100, 110, 120 uh, uh, volt circuit breakers here, just like you'd see at home. Then they're all labeled down here, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You got 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled, right? Also, the 12 volt power that it uh, converts um, will also go to the, to the front and charge both of your batteries. So as long as you're plugged into shore power, this, this power converter will keep your 12 volt batteries charged also, okay? Also, if these blow, they'll actually light up these fuses and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. So this is the power converter, goes from AC to DC. Up front is the inverter, which goes from DC to AC, okay? Now your inverter is, is attached right to your refrigerator here. So um, that's all it does is run this refrigerator. <clears throat> okay, so you have a, a invection or convection microwave, I'm sorry. Um, Regular, I don't know if the gas on this is turned on or not, but just a regular old, uh, I don't know if we got gas or not. Yeah, we do. So right there, whoops. So there you go. You're just going to push it in and, and turn on the gas. And, and it works for all four burners plus the oven does the same thing, okay? Um, always strap these doors when you're traveling so they don't come, swing open and dent something. Or dent themselves, I should say. Uh, this, is a, this is for your, your power ceiling vent up here. You see it right there. Okay. So um, you can open the lid, you can you can uh, you can select the, or operate all the controls for it from right here so you don't have to stand on a ladder to get to it. This is your zone one thermostat here works just like the one in the back. Okay this right here is your power or excuse me is your uh, carbon monoxide detector right here. You can see it. It's green. The LED is green. It should always be green. This, can, this uh, detects carbon monoxide buildup, LP gas leak, okay? And if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. I'll put it through a self-test here so you can hear it. LP gas is good, carbon monoxide coming up. Um, low battery alert coming up. And then back to green, it should always be green. Obviously, if it goes off for carbon monoxide or LP, you're gonna take everybody outside, leave the door open, Shut the gas off of the front, figure out what's going on. Okay, so here we have uh, two tables here and, and uh, storage and couches and that sort of thing. You have your, your uh, entertainment center. There's a, there's a remote for all these, these, uh, these three devices here. So the, um, let me see if I can operate it from here. The fireplace, right? Um, let me look here. You set the intensity of the flame. Low is for the fan speed, if you can see that. High fan speed. And then you go to uh, degrees after that. 
So that's for the temperature. And the next one is a, is a timer. So you can set the timer if you want for it to turn on, you know, 20 minutes before you get up in the morning to take the chill out if you want. Okay, this is your sound here. So basically this is Bluetooth. You can hook up and stream from your, your uh, tablet or phone. Um, you also can go straight into here with a USB stick so you uh, you can uh, stream you know you can put all your favorite albums on one stick and take them with you for example now this HDMI is an in so if you want to let's say to have a portable blu-ray player that you, to, to it you know to use on rainy days or any device like that you could plug it straight into here and uh, that's how you get into the system with it okay um, and uh, there's a remote for that also and then your TV has a remote also just like you would imagine okay alrighty so this is the second bathroom back here so there's a switch over here so you have a power vent here you see this control right there that's for the vent up here okay toilet the same rules apply uh, one dose of chemical and uh, a gallon or more of water. Okay. Um, so you can drop this table down onto the cleats and you can turn this into a, a bed, right? Fold this down and you got a bunk above it. Okay. Um, so you have a likewise situation here. And um, then you have uh, uh, your TV center. Now you can. The best bracket for this one would be a scissor bracket. It looks like a scissor. You can swivel it both ways. You can do a lot more with it. So you get that. Plus, um, if you can find it and if you you know you want to spend the extra money, get one that locks into place when it's in the in the retracted position, so you don't have to strap it. The straps are getting in the way and they're just a pain. So um, I suggest a scissor type for bracket for that. And there's your hookups. A lot of storage here for. For the sleeping and everything you get it's a good balance for sure okay all right i think that about covers it so I'm looking around here make sure i didn't forget anything so okay so first of all i want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at national rv detroit and second of all i want to um remind you that the manufacturer states you check the seals every 90 days so you want to look at those roof seals and take care of them immediately if you see an issue that's very important. People do not inspect their roof enough, and they need to. Okay? Thank you.